We know that in patients with immune disorders, such as, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, that the immune system is not functioning at its best. So untreated, uh, those patients, if they've got very active rheumatoid disease, uh, are at more risk of any type of infection. But if we consider patients who are treated, so they're on good treatment now for their rheumatoid disease, and they're remaining on that treatment, we don't actually know what, if, what uh, effect COVID-19 or how much more prone they are to COVID-19. So the short answer is, yes, we know that people with rheumatoid arthritis and other immune conditions do have immune systems that do not function at top level. But if the patients remain on medication and remain well controlled, and practice general hygiene measures, they have the same risk we think as the rest of the population of contracting COVID-19. For patients with inflammatory conditions with arthritis, uh, my message, and I think the message that, and this is the message from the Australian Rheumatology Association and from associations around the world, is to practice the usual measures that other people within the population are, and that is social distancing, washing hands, all the things that you're all well aware of. There's no need to wear masks at this point in time, and unless that advice changes, we're advising people not to wear masks unless they are unwell, or unless they are around people, such as if you're a health worker and you are around people who are unwell, then it is important that you do wear that. But we're advising for the general public not to wear masks, and to practice the usual measures that are being prescribed for the general population, and you don't have to take additional measures. I would give the same advice uh, to any, anyone at present, work from home if you can. If you're able to work at home and your employer will allow it, then uh, please do that at this time. If you are needed to go into work, then the usual social distancing rules apply at work. Um, zoning in some rooms is helpful. That's a, a process where people are in different zones and they don't move from those zones. And having different teams working at different times or what a lot of my patients are experiencing with their employers. Short message, try to work from home if you can. If you're allowed to, please work from home. But if you can't, social distancing at work, good hand washing, ensuring that you keep your distance from others. The important message around medication is really to continue medication. And that advice is coming through strongly from the Australian Rheumatology Association, the American College, and the European League Against Rheumatism, and the European College of Rheumatology. It's a really important message because we don't want people stopping their medication because under those circumstances, if they do and their disease flares, the concern is that their immune system uh, is attacking them and taking battery power away from their normal immune system designed to protect them. So please stay on medication. If you stop medication, we don't know really if you would be at decreased risk of contracting coronavirus, um, but we can base our, I guess, our, our evidence or our statements on previous flu epidemics where we don't see increased risk to patients on biologics. So the important message, please keep taking your medication. If you become unwell, withhold your medication and discuss with your rheumatologist. Now, under the circumstance where someone is living with someone who's diagnosed with COVID-19, we would still recommend at this point that they continue their medications. They would obviously isolate away from that person as per general public health guidelines. If they develop any symptoms at all, then we would ask them to cease their medication and contact their rheumatologist. And the, the aim would be to keep them off medication until they recover. And obviously they would undergo testing during that period if they met the requirements to determine whether there was any evidence of COVID-19. So the short answer is keep going with biologics unless you become unwell. We are assured as rheumatologists by the federal government that supply of medications for patients with conditions will be maintained. So firstly, no need to stockpile and no need to be concerned that your medication won't be available. I'll make a comment around Plaquenil, hydroxychloroquine, which is a special case. There has been a high demand for this inappropriately. 
The government has now changed legislation to make it clear that only physicians or physicians who are prescribing for patients who need this drug, who have lupus or other arthritic conditions, can prescribe. So we will, if you are having problems getting Plaquenil at the moment, we will see that balance restored fairly quickly and Plaquenil will be available once again for you. The main recommendation we have from the Australian Rheumatology Association is that uh, everyone should have the flu vax this year. And I think that uh, is a solid point and, and your GPs will be contacting you soon to begin arranging the flu vax for you. There are some patients, particularly those over the age of 65, who'd also benefit from the pneumovax, pneumococcal vaccine. And again, your GP will discuss that with you. But the flu vax is the most important vaccine that you need to consider having in the next month or so as the flu season begins in Australia. Face-to-face -face appointments cause concern, I think, for patients and doctors alike. And so there are a number of measures that are in place to protect patients so that they're not exposed to COVID-19 or any other infections if they do need to attend their rheumatologist. So firstly, most of your rheumatologists will have messages going to patients asking them not to attend if they're unwell and strict measures in their rooms that uh, patients who are unwell are not allowed to attend the waiting room. You'll also find in most rheumatology rooms or, or in all of them, there are adequate alcohol sanitising uh, facilities and patients are spaced out within the waiting room as per guidelines. So if you do have to go to the waiting room, you can be rest assured your rheumatologist is working to make sure that space is safe for you. If there are any concerns that you do have about attending, however, there is the provision for you to undertake a telehealth consultation with your rheumatologist. So the rheumatologist can phone you and do a telehealth consultation per phone or even by video link. So short answer there is, if you need to see your rheumatologist and you need to go into the rooms, you can be assured that your rheumatologist is working to ensure your safety. If you can't come into the rooms or you're concerned, um, then you can take a telehealth consultation by video or by phone. At present, our advice and the Australian Rheumatology Association's advice is that patients do need to attend, but there are special circumstances in place that we can apply for if someone cannot attend. So if you absolutely cannot attend your rheumatologist rooms for your biologic prescription, you should let them know and your rheumatologist can make a special application to the government to ask them to reconsider the decision on personal attendance. A couple of ways telehealth appointments can work for you as a patient. One is if you have a scheduled appointment at your, with your rheumatologist but you don't wish to attend, you can phone the secretary or administrative staff for your rheumatologist and they can usually convert your physical appointment to a telehealth appointment that may either be by video or phone depending on the choice between you and your rheumatologist. The rheumatologist will then phone you at the appointed time or video contact you at the appointed time and undertake your appointment. The other way is that if you are feeling unwell or you need a consultation with your rheumatologist but you don't want to attend the rooms, you can phone the rooms and certainly what we do here is people, patients will phone and our administrative staff will put them in as a teleconsult and we know that we ring them to discuss their case with them. So for patients out there who are feeling isolated and feeling they can't get in contact with their rheumatologist, telehealth is a really good way at present of us being able to keep in contact with you when you physically can't attend the rooms. We would usually prefer to have blood investigations undertaken during the week before the telehealth appointment, if possible. Now, we understand that's difficult with pathologies often being um, uh, difficult to access, but having a blood test when the rheumatologist reviews you per phone or video is really helpful in sorting out with your symptoms how you're going on your medication and facilitates treatment decisions that I might make about uh, increasing medication, changing medication, and looking for any possible adverse effects of medication. So that blood test, if you're able to have it and your rheumatologist has ordered it, it is important that you attend to have that done if you can. Four really good sources of information in Australia at present. The Australian Rheumatology Association has excellent information on its homepage. 
uh, for patients. So please visit that uh, that web address, Australian Rheumatology Association. The Arthritis Australia website is also a very useful source of information. And there are two patient organisations, Creaky Joints Australia and MSK Australia. Both of these also have very useful information available to you. It's a very uncertain time for all of us, but it's really important as a doctor that I'm able to reassure you that your supply of medicine will be maintained, that you should maintain your medication, and that uh, obviously this will end eventually, but in the meantime, we have to follow the guidelines that the government gives us and ensure that we undertake those guidelines to prevent, prevent uh, spread of COVID-19. Um, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that as time progresses, the number of new cases will decrease if we follow the guidelines and uh, will come through hopefully over the next few months and be able to resume normal life. But for all of you, stay safe, um, follow the guidelines, treat yourself as, a, as a, a general person, follow the guidelines that the organisations are giving us for general, the general public and stay safe.